couple weeks back, a good buddy of mine in Second Life purchased an avatar of Pikachu from Pokemon. Now, I'm not really into Pokemon or anything, but it was a cell shaded avatar, and I just thought that was so cool giving it that tune effect in Second Life. And I really wanted to figure out how this was done, so I did a little bit of research, and I figured it out. And I'm going to show you how to do it here with the basic sphere. Uh, you can do it with other shapes, uh, you just got to know the fundamental concepts behind it and apply them maybe slightly differently depending on the shape. But I know it works among different shapes, um, cubes and stuff like that. You just got to put a little bit of thought into it. But today we're just going to do it with the sphere to show you the concepts behind it and how it works. Um, first I'm going to make a sphere. Then I'm going to stretch it out just to give you a good view of it. And I'm actually going to raise it up a little bit so when I cam around it later possibly to see if it's all enveloped that it looks good. So we're going to go to the wood texture here. We don't want the wood texture on it. I mean, I suppose we could, but for our purposes, we're just going to make it blank. I'm going to select color yellow because, like I said, this was inspired by a Pikachu avatar. Now, we're going to want to cell shade this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out a copy. We're going to hold shift, drag one up. And then I'm going to change my color to black because that's going to be my cell shading. Then I'm going to go to the objects tab. And under the object tab, I'm going to change the size. I'm going to go up about eight clicks per, per vector. So, And then under the hollow option, I'm going to go 95%. So now we have the black hollowed out sphere that's slightly bigger than our yellow one. So what we're going to do is bring this down to the exact spot where the yellow one is. So you could use your positioning coordinates. I'm just kind of roughly doing this. That's why I raised it up so I can just kind of cam around it and make sure it's fully around it. Looks good. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to go to select texture, select our texture tab here, and we're going to select the outer texture on our black sphere. Now remember this has two textures. Now that it's hollowed out, it has an inner texture and an outer texture, so we're selecting the outer one. Then we're going to go to our transparency options and go to 100. Now since I didn't quite line this up, I'm going to have to use position to fine tune. And there we go. You can rotate around this and notice that it has that cartoon type cell shaded effect. Now if you were going to use this for something like an avatar or something, or just make it permanent, we all know how to lock objects, just select them, control L. And we can move this little cell shaded object around anywhere we want. So basically in short, all we did was make a duplicate object, we hollowed it out, made it black, and then we took the outer textures and we made those transparent while the inners are black, and that's why the black is showing around it. And that's the basics of cell shading in Second Life. Hope you guys play around with this. Hope you learned something and have fun.